Barber, it's so good to have you here with me on tonight's show, especially as we are joined by comedian Stephen K. Amos. And here is what happened when I caught up with him. Stephen, it's great to have you on the show. How are you? I'm doing very well. In fact, my word of the day is agreeable. Thank you, <laughs> Hayley, for having me. How are you doing? I'm really good, thank you. And I'm very excited to have you here on the show. And I've got to say, I'm loving the shirts. Oh, thank you very much. I did think hard about what to wear. But you know what? I'm in my residence. Who needs a three-piece suit? I'm on a sofa. That's kind of part of the three-piece suite anyway. Exactly. You're rocking it. And what have you been up to? What's been going on in your world, Stephen? Well, we all know what's been happening the last couple of years. So uh, I've been reconnecting with friends and family and then uh, doing a lot of writing and a lot of contemplation. Sort of think about what I want to do, where I'm going, where I'm at, all those sorts of things. And uh, lucky enough to be also uh, uh, performing back again. So uh, yes. things are opening up. And the audiences are just incredible. I've just oh. finished a play as well in London, uh, which is called My Night with Reg. And it was a wonderful experience. So I got to do something a bit out of my comfort zone. Yeah, like doing that. We're going to go into your first song choice. Now, you have got some absolutely brilliant song choices on tonight's show. I've got to say, yes. we're going to kick off with Bob Marley, Redemption Song. Why this song, Stephen? Well, I, I defy anyone to listen to the lyrics of this song. And it's just about, it's, it's about hope, isn't it? It's about looking back and what we can do with ourselves. And it's really apt for this time of year, I think. Yeah. And uh, I'm a huge fan of Bob Marley. You know, when I was growing up, it was one of the soundtracks of my youth. So Bob Marley, uh, legend, the man. Absolutely. Well, here it is from 1980, enjoy. And I will be catching up with Stephen after this. <laughs> back Stephen how everything started because okay. when did you first get into comedy when did you know you were really funny oh do you know that's one of the the, the million dollar questions I'm not quite know. sure I'm not quite sure because I was one of these kids quite precocious a big family and you know when you've got many siblings you've got to do something to stand out and my thing was just do jokes be this silly kid even in class at school the typical class clown not really paying attention and I think uh, I didn't know uh, all these years later that those skills, that th those little uh, uh, moments would actually become a career and a job. Because uh, I, I went, I saw some uh, family friends a couple of weekends ago up north, uh, whose who's, their parents were, uh, my parents were really good friends. And they reminded me of when I used to go and visit them as a child, uh, about 10 years of age, uh, doing little plays for them and making up <laughs> stories. And I just thought, wow, I'd even forgotten that. But for me, what happened, uh, I was uh, in the midst of academia and I went traveling to New York for a long weekend. And the long right. weekend consisted of bottomless margaritas. And uh, uh, the woman like who was, it. yeah, I know, right? What a great way to spend a weekend in New York, eh? Who needs the sights? So uh, I was visiting a friend of mine and at the same time, another friend of his from the UK was visiting. And at the end of that weekend, she said to me, you're really funny. Have you ever thought of doing comedy? And I was like, do you know what? I think you're all funny after bottomless margaritas. I'm not <laughs> sure. And then she said, I actually run comedy clubs. Come and do stuff for me. And at that point, I'd never been to a comedy club myself. And so I go back to London and uh, we hooked up and uh, she took me to my first ever comedy club in Southwest London in Fulham. And I thought, wow, this is incredible. There are people on stage talking. And we, the audience, are laughing. I can give this a go. And that's how it started. But it's quite daunting, isn't it? Like, to get up there and do that. I'd be like, actually, I'm not funny and run off. But, you know, how do you get over the nerves? Or does it just come so naturally? Do you know, that's a, that's a good question. Well, I didn't know because I hadn't... Uh, it wasn't my plan. I, I, it didn't really affect me. I thought, you know, I might as well just go and give it a go. What's the worst that can happen? People aren't <laughs> going to laugh or people go, boo! Or they heckle you by just going off, off, off. And the amount of people who say that's to, this to me, they go, oh, I couldn't do comedy. It's such a, it's so difficult, or public speaking. And I'm thinking to myself, I could ever be a brain surgeon. I couldn't be a social worker. You know, I couldn't do a job that really meant that, oh my goodness, yeah. my decisions could really affect people's lives. But yeah. then on the flip side, I guess, you know, comedy brightens people's days. 
It really does. I absolutely love going to see comedy. Honestly, that's my right. thing, Stephen. And do you know, I think I'm quite funny, but my mum says to me, she says, you laugh after everything you say, and that's why you're not funny. So I need to learn <laughs> to keep like a deadpan face, don't I? Well, not necessarily. Maybe, you're, maybe you've got something there because <laughs> no. maybe that could be your stick. You know, oh, I see. A, right, a, okay. a comic who just laughs at every, in a nervous way at everything you say, that might become infectious with the audience. Or, as your mum says, it could be irritating. Yeah, all right, okay, we'll take that from Mummy Palmer. No, We're no. Gonna go, <laughs> We're no, gonna don't go take that from Ma Palmer. Take it for yourself. Try it. Well, you never know, but all I can say is I've got in trouble my whole life for talking and laughing, Stephen, so uh, I don't know what's <laughs> going to happen with me. Uh, we're going to go into your next song, Chaka Khan, Ain't Nobody. Why this one? Oh, my God. Who doesn't love the legend that is Chaka Khan? From the days right. with Rufus and Chaka Khan, this woman's voice, her sass, her energy, and this tune, oh, my goodness, it was probably one of the first bumping tunes I heard in a club that got everybody on their feet and everybody's body moving. Yes, we want everyone at home on your feet right now. Stephen is going to throw some shapes and we'll see you after this. <laughs> Stephen, we've got some questions from some of our Ooh. lovely viewers. Maisie, uh, who said she went to your gig and you gave her a copy of your DVD, uh, oh. says, I know that was nice, wasn't it? Says, um, who was your favourite band when you were younger and do you still like them now? My favourite band? Uh, well, first of all, uh, thank you, Maisie, uh, for coming to the gig. And I'm very pleased that uh, I was so generous enough to uh, just give you a DVD. And I hope I signed it and said something nice. Yeah. Anyway, um, my favourite band when I was growing up, that's a really tough question. Um, I, I, do you know what? Because I didn't go to many gigs uh, because we weren't allowed out anywhere, our parents were very strict. So for me, it was all about watching Top of the Pops and getting oh. sucked into whatever was the, 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 oh. the band of the day. So, yeah. um, oh, my favourite band when I was growing up. What about, um, do you know what? I'll give you this one for, for nothing. Uh, I come from a very large family, like I said, and uh, suddenly this band, this pop band, arrived on the scene that reminded me of my family. Uh, they were young black kids, they were from uh, South East London, maybe even Essex, and they were called Five Star. I wow. love Five Star. We've had you... Doris on the show. Oh, and I Stedman. love them. Both Stedman of them. taught me one of the routines on this show, yes. Oh, really? Yes. We are I, I massive five-star fans on this show. I bet you I could do all those routines as well, even at on my age I think now. it was Systematic he taught me. Systematic. <laughs> I don't know, I won't do more. I won't do more. We won't do but it yes. now, but... Uh, yes, wow. but, yeah. Oh, and I used, to tell, I used to tell little white lies, and I used to tell my friends that five-star were my cousins. <laughs> Love that, but just to confirm, they're not. They are not my cousins, but I have met right. Stedman, I have met Denise, oh, I have him. met Doris, yes. and, you know... Uh, as a young uh, lad growing up in South West London, seeing this family, these siblings, singing and dancing, and they were hailed as uh, Britain's answer to the Jackson Five. Yeah. It was incredible. Yes, love Five Star. I feel like we might need to play a Five Star song on tonight's show. Um, yeah, I think the dedication so. of that. I think we so. should. I like Rain and, or Shine. Oh, Rain or Shine, that's good. So I'm, I'm, I'm kind of falling into the sort of ballady world as well. I like, I like Systematic that you just said. I like um, uh, Rain or Shine. I like, I like them all. We like them all. Would you know what? We're going to go into a five star song right now on that note, and we'll speak to you after this. You're my light and shiny. Stephen, we have got a quick fire question around for you. On a scale of one to ten, how excited are you? Wow, I love quick fire question rounds. Uh, I'll scale of one to ten, I'm ten point nine. Is that even a thing? <laughs> Not really, but we'll take that. <laughs> do I Here win a go. prize though? Do you I do. You're going to win chocolate. Oh my goodness, I love chocolate. Oh. Me too. Here we oh, go. As, okay. First record ever purchased. Um. Uh, uh, I Got the Power by Snap. Oh, what a tune. Yeah. I haven't heard anyone say that before. That's brilliant. <laughs> <laughs> Guys, I think I've still got the power. You have. A dance floor song. Is there a song 
when you're out and you hear it and you're like, I'm not going to sit down. I'm going to hit that dance floor and throw some serious shapes. Oh my goodness. It's got to be uh, We Are Family by Sister Sledge. Absolutely Everyone classic. hears a tune. Everyone is up da- dancing. You I love feel it. like your family with the whole dance floor, don't you? Exactly. You want to hug oh, everybody. Yeah, yeah I love that. Uh, yeah. Karaoke song. Exactly. Is, is there that, a karaoke song? Oh, is there, oh, that I would sing? Yeah. Oh my goodness. If you ever see me in a karaoke <laughs> bar, it means I've had too much to drink. Uh, I don't think I would try and attempt gold, maybe uh, by Spandau Ballet. But I mean, I mm, yeah, I feel I mean, like what... that could be quite good after a couple of drinks. <laughs> I, I, I beg to differ. It would be <laughs> like hearing a, a a drowned moose trying to sing gold, comparing my <laughs> vocals to Tony Hadley. Now, I actually want to go to karaoke with you just to see uh, that <laughs> in action. A guilty pleasure song. Is there a song that you shouldn't like? But you guilty, do. Guilty pleasure song. Um, I, w- I would have to say um, anything by ABBA would <sighs> be my guilty pleasure. It's um, not even my guilty pleasure. I just love it. Oh, you see that? I can't quite bring myself to say I love it. I've got friends who love ABBA, but yeah. I'm just like... Mm. Voulez vu. Voulez, exactly. We all know the <laughs> words. But when I think of ABBA, I also think of cheese. <laughs> I love ABBA and I'm proud. Uh, driving song. <laughs> driving song. Um, we're on the road to nowhere. <laughs> yeah, that's a good driving Very song. Very apt. And a motivational song. Is that a song that you put on and you're like, yes, I'm going to take on the world. I'm going to go to the gym. Do, oh, do you know what? Yes. More recently, um, the big motivational song for me is quite a big song. Um, uh, it's by Katy Perry and it's uh, yeah. Raw. Ah, oh, yeah. Yeah. When you hear that, it's, you're like, yes. Yeah, you just feel And the way the song builds, you're like, uh, it's like, I could imagine it being in the final scene in the musical Les Mis, where the entire cast <laughs> are going, you want to hear me? That's oh, a really oh, good oh, idea. Oh, 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 oh. <laughs> oh, yeah, I'm going to talk to Andrew Lloyd Webber, see so if we can get that sorted. It snapped that off. I'm surprised he hasn't already. <laughs> <laughs> Anyway, moving forward, uh, we're going to play Heart of Glass, Blondie. Why yeah. the song? Why Heart of Glass by Blondie? Well, my twin sister is my best friend in the world and her favourite band is Blondie. Uh, led, of course, by the amazing Debbie Harry, uh, Rick Stein. And just, it was one of, the, one of those bands who uh, broke into the scene, I think in the late seven, mid to late 70s, wrote yeah. all their own stuff. And this front woman who could not only sing, but she had sass, she had attitude, she had energy. She was beautiful. So Blondie for me, wow. Yeah. Stands the test of time. Absolutely. Well, here it is. Number one, baby, in 1979. Enjoy. <laughs> talk about your before and laughter tour which is going all over England it must be so nice to be out on the road again oh my goodness uh do you know what it's so humbling to be able to go out and do what I do uh because as we all know not just performers but the backstage crew the front of house crew everybody connected to the theatre from the publicist to the uh the tickets or everyone was affected so badly but then we also forget that the audiences themselves have been starved of real live entertainment. And so to be able to go across the country uh, and doing what I do for this tour that has been postponed twice in the last oh 18 months or two years and people coming out, having a good time. I mean, what, what better job is there in the world? Wow, yes. And what can we expect from the tour? Is there anything we should look out for that's... Particular highlights? Particular highlights. Well, of course, I'm not going to be harping on and dwelling on the past in terms of, you know, the situation. I'm not going to be uh, mentioning the big dreaded C word either. But uh, I am reflecting. I'm I'm in reflective mode. But uh, hopefully when I reflect on what I've been thinking, it might resonate with people in the audience. So my whole focus is, you know, what do I want out of life now? It sounds quite philosophical. That's quite a deep question. But the oh, thing like is, yeah. my thing is, we just got to be, enjoy, live your life. Because if you don't, who knows what's going to happen tomorrow. 
And uh, upon all that, the gel that uh, puts the whole show together is laughter. And we all know how infectious laughter is. If you're sat in a theatre or an art centre or even a, a, an arena watching a comedian and other people around you are laughing, you can't help but to be carried on along with that joy. Yeah, it's so true. We can't wait for it. Um, we're going to put details on the screen below of how you can get tickets. Uh, we're yeah. going to go into your next song. Oh, I'm excited yes, for this please. one. Don't Ooh. stop till you get enough. Yes. <laughs> yeah. I have to get up to this one. Why this song? Well, because, you know, the Jackson 5 for me was really my era. I'm, I, I grew up in, you know, the sort of 70s, uh, early 80s, when music was pumping through the radio. Uh, and back in those days, get this young people, we only had three TV channels. Imagine that. I so remember those days. I know, right? So everything was on the radio. And for me, all you had to do was listen to the opening bar of a Jackson 5 track, and you know that you'd be on your feet giving it a good old boogie. Yes, and we want everyone giving it a good old boogie. Here we go, and we'll see you after. a new exciting project coming up Stephen give us the goss well Hayley what can I tell you that I'm allowed to well um because um thankfully we've had uh, a lot of time to think and write and put stuff on paper uh, I've got a couple of projects on the go um I'm heading off to uh, Australia in the new year to do a massive tour and then an American tour followed by something in America Shh, watch wow. this space uh, but myself and my uh, co-producer have just put together a new show and it's called Me, I Blame the Parents. And uh, basically it's myself talking to hand-picked guests from the world of sport, comedy, entertainment about their parents. And I'm talking about their parents who were born in uh, either as part of the silent generation or the baby boomers. So we're talking about our, our elderly folk and giving them some props, looking back and having laughs about the fond memories and the different recollections we have from when we were growing up. Oh, I love that. Well, we want to hear more about that. So do keep us posted here on the show. Uh, we're going to go uh, into your last song choice. Yay! Beyonce, If I Were a Boy, why this song? Well, do you know what? What can be said about Queen Bee? Uh, this woman, when she first came on the scene with Destiny's Child, they were amazing. Uh, and then she broke off and did a solo career and just churned out song after song, hit after hit. And then I heard this, this kind of ballad, great voice, If I Were A Boy. And the video that comes with this song was just brilliant. And the message that she was putting out with that song, that's one of the reasons why I like uh, Beyonce, that uh, as she's grown and developed as an artist, it's not just about pop songs and happy songs, it's a song with meaning and depth. Yes. Beyonce, as far as I'm concerned, can do no wrong. I agree with that. What an absolute queen. We love Beyonce, so we're going to be playing yes. it out on the show. But Stephen, this has gone so quickly. Oh, I know. Time flies when you're having so much fun. <laughs> it really does. But thank you so much for giving us some great entertainment, some brilliant song choices, uh, especially Five Star. And uh, <laughs> <laughs> we're going to be teaching Stephen the routines uh, after the show. Um, I think we should have, we should have a follow-up um, meeting where we both do the routines of every single five-star track. That would be so entertaining for not only ourselves, but for the nation, because <laughs> yeah, that's it could go horribly wrong. It? Yeah, I'm up for it. Let's do it. <laughs> Let's do it. <laughs> but Stephen, thank you so much for a brilliant evening. It's Stephen K.A. Moss, everyone. Thank you, guys. Thank you very much. And keep listening to music and keep dancing. If I were a boy... Big thank you, Stephen K. Amos. We loved having him on tonight's show. And thank you to you at home for supporting the show. It really is so appreciated. Thank you. Now, I will see you same time, same place next week. And I'm going to leave you with Saturday Night, Song of the Week. Hi, Ailey. Introducing my new single, Outrageous. Out now. Enjoy it. Let's
do something outrageous Let's do it now The right police will never cage us Let's do it now Boredom, boredom creeping in Wasting time is such a sin So much trash on the TV screen Don't wanna be like a wasted teen Seen all the boxes on Netflix Fed up with booze and these some real kicks Hollywood remakes for such a bore James Bond's an aging dinosaur Let's do something outrageous Let's do it now The right police will never cage us Let's do it now Restless blood flows through my veins Spent the weekend dodging trains Streak on the pitch at the Euros final Melt down all your best friends final Let's show the world what we can do Don't waste time feeling blue Dye your hair the colours of the rainbow Why oh why? It's because you're a weirdo Jump around on a bed of hot coals Send out messages and troll the trolls Shopping precincts, panda to your primal instinct. We can shop naked in the supermarket. A harness price up Morton Harkin. We will drive you round the bend. There's no knowing for well, this will end. Let's do something outrageous. Let's do it now. The right police will never cage us. Let's do it now. Let's do something outrageous. Let's do it now The right police will never cage us Let's do it now Let's do something outrageous Let's do it now The right police will never cage us Let's do it now Let's do something outrageous Let's do it now The right police will never cage us Let's do it now Let's do it now Uh-huh Oh yeah Hmm Alright